Welcome, I'm Vivek and in this video, let's uh, discuss how much practice is good enough. Coming to uh, practice for competitive examinations, we always face this dilemma on whether we've done enough practice for a topic or uh, should we keep on doing a bit more. So what I do is I will point out a certain dilemmas that we normally face and what you can do is you can consider these as benchmarks so that if you cross these, that is if you don't face these confusions anymore, you can consider yourself safe to move on to the next topic, right? So dilemma number one. This is about uh, whether you are able to determine those parameters which are negligible. For example, uh, you're calculating total time. Now you're confused whether the transmission time is negligible or should you consider it? Or let's say you're calculating total length of a packet and you're confused whether the header length is negligible or not. If you're facing these sort of problems, you should practice a bit more, right? Number two. Now, this is about the question terminology. I'll illustrate this with an example. Uh, this is a previous gate question. Two numbers are chosen independently and uniformly at random. Now, see this. Two numbers are chosen. Yes, you chose two numbers. Independently, which means the first pick and the second pick are independent of each other. That is, you can pick one number and pick the same number again because the first and second picks are independent. Now, uniformly at random. Uh, this means every number has equal chances of getting picked. Now, once you understand this, you will get the right senses of the question and you'll be able to answer correctly. Again, practice well if you don't, if you're not getting this. Number three, this is the worst dilemma you can ever face in an exam hall. That is, you know the question, you know the concept, you know how to answer, but the problem is you are confused whether the question is asking for one particular part that's in your mind or should you consider the other part. For example, uh, let's say you're calculating effective memory access time. Now, you're confused whether you have to calculate the time to convert logical address to physical address or uh, the time to fetch the word from memory. Now, it can also be a sum of both. So if you're facing these problems, once you see enough questions, by looking at it, you'll be getting the idea of what exactly it is asking, right? Now, number four. This is about how to reach an answer. Uh, there are two methods. First one, you can solve the question. And the second, you can eliminate the wrong options. Now see, if you solve the questions, you will anyway reach the answer. But in competitive examinations, instead of let's say taking two or three minutes, you may finish it in 40 seconds if you eliminate wrong options. Now, again, if you practice enough, you see those kind of questions, Looking at the question and the options, you will understand that yes, I have to eliminate wrong options in this question, right? Point number five. This is about calculations. Sometimes you may have to calculate it in mind, sometimes with pen and paper, and sometimes with virtual calculator. Now see, anyway you'll reach the answer, but the optimal timing will be for one particular method for one particular calculation. Again. See, this depends on person to person and also from question to question. So once you do enough practice, you see those numbers again and again. Looking at the numbers, you'll be instantly able to identify which is the optimal method for you to use. Last point, point number six. This is something peculiar to competitive examinations. And this is about which question to leave. See, in any competitive examination, if you score 70% or 80% marks, you'll be in top 100 ranks. Now, you have the option of leaving those questions which are going to trouble you. See, there are two cases. The first one, when you don't know the concept. Here you anyway want to leave it. It's clear. There's a second case. That is, you know the question, you know how to answer, but it is time consuming. Uh, for example, matrix state multiplication. 
uh, in this question, uh, it, it could be very easy, but it may take up your time if the numbers are large. So what you can do is put those for the end, uh, take other questions in the beginning, and then once you have time at the end, you can go for those questions. And what you have to remember is if you lose time at the beginning of the exam, it will create panic in your mind. So what happens is this affects your answering other questions as well. So yeah, leave the time uh, consuming questions for the end. Now these are the six major dilemmas. Now there are see, two special cases. First one is uh, of careless mistakes and second one when you don't know the concept. If you face these issues during the exam hall, you really can't do anything because you don't know the concept, you have to leave it. And if some careless mistake happened by your bad luck, you can't help really. But these six dilemmas that I mentioned, if you do good practice, if you give enough concentration, you can avoid this during exam hall, right? So this is what I have to convey to you. Uh, hope you like the video. Thanks for watching.